but I can't exist that way forever. You had a good point with identifying triggers. That was so important. <laughs> Hopefully you find what those triggers are before it gets to a severe panic attack or a mental breakdown or um, a dislocation of the shoulder if you're an artist or an athlete like myself. Um, but yeah, identifying the things that are causing you stress and asking for help. Reaching out, Ooh, reach telling out. your business partner <laughs> that, hey, I need a week off or, um, you know, telling that student, like, I can't work with you on this day. I would love to make that money and teach you these skills, but I need this time for myself. Mm. That's really hard to do, but self-care is kind of like an art form in itself. Oh I God, know, I'm for sure. About it. And it's always changing. Like you said, like, I can't do the same thing that I did yesterday for my self-care that I did today because I have different things that I have to do today. So I have right. different methods, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important goal to realize too, that everybody's self-care looks really different. I'm an introvert. So for me, going out and seeing a crap ton of people is not exceedingly self-care inducing right. for other people who are extroverted. That's really great. So sure. knowing that, how have you prioritized self-care as you face the challenges of growing your business? Heather and I only recently started paying ourselves, um, which is awesome. <laughs> right? I am money awesome. now. <laughs> Um, and part of that was um, buying ourselves, between the two of us, four massages a month. So Heather gets two and I get two. Um, that includes energy work, so if you're into that kind of thing, and, um, that's a really great route to go if your business can help pay for that. Um, I also really enjoy just taking vacations, taking time off, visiting friends that I know online that I don't get to see very often. Um, what are other ways that I prioritize my self-care? Do you have any particular triggers that you run into where you say, gosh, this is the time I need to start kicking up? For sure. I think like when I start feeling like I'm going to have a panic attack, mm -hmm. which those started really heavily the first year that the business was opened. Mm -hmm. The first day that we opened was Heather's birthday. Um, and that was, we were hosting like four or five traveling well-known aerialists for workshops. And we had to get one permit in place that day <laughs> or we couldn't open legally. Um, oh my gosh. And that was like one of the first times I think I really experienced like what an actual anxiety attack is. And then it was a good six months later that I sought help and I started um, taking an antidepressant that helped with anxiety. So I've been on and off medications of different parts of my life too to try to help with that. And there's nothing wrong with that. So if you feel like you need help, um, short term or long term, ask for it. Um, well, for your business to be thriving and successful, you have to make sure that you're thriving and successful. And you're, one of the last questions we love to ask everybody is, what advice would you have given yourself with the knowledge that you now have? I'm going to read my list. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have a whole list. A whole list. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. So, my first thing is to work less. Thing. Just work less. It's okay. <laughs> uh, wait to answer your emails. Um, take breaks. Get comfortable using the vacation responder. People can wait. Um, ask for help when you need it. Slow down. Um, but at the same time, it's important to honor your drive, your commitment, and your tenacity because that's what got you here in the first place. That's what sets you apart. Um, so honor those things about yourself. Don't make yourself feel bad for being hard on yourself. Your friends will try to make you feel bad for being hard on yourself. And they've got a point to a certain degree, but. Um, you gotta push yourself. And only you know your true limits. And only you know your true limits. Yeah. So um, I think just like I wish that I had worked less, <laughs> I guess, this whole time. This is not a hospital. Like, all of these people can wait. <laughs> it's not <laughs> urgent oh by any means. Unless the building is on fire, like, nobody needs to contact me on Tuesdays or Absolutely. whatever. Yes. I feel like it's quality over quantity. Yeah. It's like I could get a little bit done on this PDF that I'm trying to build and make it look really beautiful, or I could um, try to get the PDF done and eight other things within that same time limit that I've set myself, and that PDF's going to wind up, you know, looking like, you know, coloring book page. <laughs> Four-year-olds that Absolutely. maybe is still honing in on their artistic skills, so. That's yeah. such good advice. I feel like I try to just, like, do so much stuff all the time, and I'm, like, trying to work on that. It's taken a long, time, a long time and a lot of experiences um, that have led me to that realization. And simply hearing somebody say these things is wasn't enough for me. <laughs> I had to experience yeah, I have it a Thank you, Waverly, co-owner of Imperial Arts, and we have some special links for you in the show notes. So make sure to check it out. You can see where to register for classes in Imperial Arts and other resources that Waverly has to share. So thanks. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.